So here we're checking out the Hope Run uh, board here with a TI chipset. Hello, so who are you? Hey, I'm Mark Grossen. I'm an engineering manager with TI, and I work on the uh, uh, real-time operating system support at TI, which includes uh, the Zephyr work being done here at Lenaro. And uh, who are you? I'm Liu Yang from Hope, from Hope Run. And uh, right here you have this board. Uh, it's available. How much it cost? Uh, Twenty-five. Twenty-five dollars. Yeah. So what is it for? Well. IoT, obviously, so uh, it, it is a uh, Cortex-M4 with an associated network processor that runs the whole uh, Wi-Fi stack and TCP IP stack and TLS. So the main MCU chip uh, doesn't have to do any of the networking or security um, software, so it makes your M4 free for your whole application. Um, and this is uh, uh, with uh, uh, Wi-Fi? That's right. On the Cortex-M4? Uh, it's a separate Cortex-M that has the network stack and the Wi-Fi. So there are actually two Cortex-Ms on the device, one for your application and one just for the networking. So it's kind of like an SOC? It is, absolutely. And then it has a bunch of the usual peripherals, I2C, SPI, UARTs, A to D, um, camera interface, I2S, and those sort of things as well. And it runs Zephyr, but some other uh, yeah. real-time OS? Yep. Uh, TI, we have our own um, operating system called TI RTOS that has a yeah. TI kernel, and we also support free RTOS. Cool. Uh, how did you work on making this? Uh, and where are you based, the company? Yeah. Uh, you know that's it. Our first uh, 96, 96 boards. Yeah. yeah. The first? Yes, our first 96 boards. And we were very excited to work, uh, co work with TI on 96 board. So, did the yes. TI and you uh, work on the specifications? Yeah. All the stuff that you like to have in there? Yeah. Uh, like, please have this, 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 this. And you say, okay, no problem? No kind of problem. Okay, no problem. You can yeah. just do it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and you know, one of the nice things is working with uh, Hope Run and 96 boards, we have a standard form factor. So, with this connector, we can you know, use all the mezzanine boards that are coming to do things like audio and sensors and all those things. So um, the, the form factor is very nice. It's usable both for, I think, development and also you could use it for a, you know, an early product uh, type uh, uh, demo system because it is so small and compact. And, and I think it even has a uh, battery charger yeah, on battery it as well. Here. So yes. this is a yeah, JST for, a, for a, a lipo, lipo battery? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like the same small batteries you have on a drone or something like that. You just hang yeah. it on. And yeah, yeah. Uh, like a 1S cell? Uh, uh, I will set battery lighter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, the CC3220, uh, is, uh, is that a very massively deployed chipset out there in the world? Yeah, this is actually the second generation. There was a 3200. This is a, a new version. Um, uh, so the first generation had a, a lot of usage. This now adds uh, IPv6 support and new TLS cipher suite, so it's a more up-to-date uh, networking support. But uh, it's a Cortex M4, one megabyte of flash, 256k RAM running at 80 megahertz. Low power consumption? Very low power. You can run this for uh, years off two AAA cells. With, years. with the right the right duty cycle, obviously. Uh, <laughs> with, but, the right, uh, with the right software. And the right software, that's right. So it's software and hardware and you know it's in those sort of things it's you know you wake up every fifteen minutes, take a sample and send it over Wi Fi. If you were continuously connected, obviously it won't last as long. But and uh, the RTAS, the T I RTAS, is that open source? Yes, it's all open source, it's BSD licensed. Um, and like I said, it has a kernel, we have POSIX APIs for P-threads and BSD sockets, so it's very compatible with uh, people who are used to the Linux environment, so it's easy to move your code back and forth. And we also support the popular uh, open source free RTOS kernel as well. So you can choose either kernel, TI's kernel, or uh, free RTOS. And then of course, working with, here with Lenaro, we'll have uh, Zephyr support as well. So how does Zephyr compare with the R uh, TI RTOS? Um, well, it's a lot newer, it's different uh, that way. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's also a, a, an industry cross ISA effort, so it's started by Intel, so it supports x86, ARM, uh, MIPS, um, a couple other ISAs. So it's more like a Linux thing where it's vendor independent and ISA independent, whereas the kernel that we have is uh, only running on TI ISAs like ARM and DSP and, and microcontrollers. You can't 
modify it to run it on another You chip could, set? you could. We you don't do that? support it that way, but it is BSD licensed, so you could take it and run it uh, wherever you wanted to. And do people submit a whole bunch of improvements to it all the time? We get, we get improvements via our support forums. We have a very active uh, support forum, so people support, uh, you know, either find bugs or ask for new feature requests, and then we implement. We don't typically get um, uh, source code patches. We get a few, but it's, it's run more as a project that uh, TI maintains and, and supports. So what can developers do with this? What do you think they will do with this? Is that fun? Uh, what, what, what kind of a product maybe will happen? Uh, maybe like some IoT devices like uh, the, the 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 smart door, smart smart smart, s smart solution, smart yeah. door. Yes, yeah, smart door, and uh, maybe other <coughs> IoT device like uh, the um, work. Uh, sorry. Many different. Yeah, many so different. What do people do with this kind of chipset? Like, there's a million different yeah, ideas. Yeah, the, the example of Elox is one. Uh, it's it's very popular with uh, video doorbells today. Um, there are large customers using it for uh, doorbells uh, as well as locks. Um, uh, in the industrial and automotive space, or more of the industrial space, it's used for um, a lot of uh, on the floor uh, sensing type uh, things. It has, uh, since it has very good security, it's good in, in enterprise and, and uh, industrial environments as well. So it has very good security. Yep, it's got all the latest uh, TLS and Cypher suites that uh, you know are recommended for people to use. Opti? Opti, no. So, so this, this is a Cortex-M device, and so it's V7M, not V8M. So the next generation, which will be based on the new Cortex-M33, will have Trust Zone M, but those devices don't exist yet. All right, so uh, right there, uh, interesting uh, 96 board product, right? That's right. And uh, with support, yeah. with, with uh, availability, yeah. and you're selling. Yeah, we are selling this next month. You can buy it from the internet, okay? Cool.